In this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of this Sony VAIO VGN-UX180P Ultra Mobile PC. Now, I actually got this machine off eBay quite a while ago for around $120. Now, uh, for that price, you might think uh, that I overpaid for something like this, uh, especially considering how old this machine actually is. However, that is actually a very, very good deal uh, for one of these machines, especially considering all of the accessories that I got with it, uh, which I'll go over in just a minute. Um, so yeah, this is a very unique system, as you can see. It is a basically a handheld PC, and um, it has a touchscreen and a little track point device right here uh, that you use to control it with. Um, so this device came out in around 2006 and originally shipped with Windows XP, a 30 gigabyte hard drive, 512 megabytes of RAM, and a 1.2 gigahertz Intel Core Solo CPU. Now, this is the oldest model they released in the US, the UX180P, and as such, it originally came with the lowest specs, which I just mentioned. Um, so, as you would expect for something like this, the RAM and CPU are soldered onto this board, so it's not easy to upgrade them. Now, I intend to actually upgrade this machine, um, and uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I plan on doing it with it right now. So right here, I have a Core 2 Duo U7600 CPU. Um, this is, of course, a BGA CPU, and it, it is only designed uh, to be used in a BGA platform. I don't even know if Intel made the U7600 in a PGA configuration. Um, but I did buy this uh, brand new, basically, um, and of course, as you can see, uh, there are solder balls already applied to it. Now, I'm not going to be doing the upgrade in this video. Um, this is just going to be an overview, an overview video of this machine and of all of its accessories. Um, however, I do plan on making another video uh, sometime in the near future uh, detailing the Core 2 Duo upgrade. Um, now, I actually have a few of these machines. Uh, this is one of three that I have. Um, and uh, I did take one apart uh, just so we can kind of see what the motherboard looks like. Um, so here's the motherboard of the VAIO. Um, this is of out of another UX180P, which is the exact model that one is. And while I did intend to upgrade the RAM on this machine, um, it turns out that's going to be a little bit more difficult than I, than I anticipated. Um, as you can see here, um, these are some of the RAM chips. And while this wouldn't normally be a problem to replace chips like this, if we take a very close look at them, you can see that they have underfill around them. Now, I have tried to work with underfill in the past, and I have failed miserably every single time, either damaging the board um, or just ripping up some of the solder mask, making soldering in a new soldering a new chip on there um, completely impossible. So I don't plan on attempting a RAM upgrade on these machines, even though it would be quite nice to do so, considering they only have 512 megs. Um, but unfortunately, uh, that's just not going to be a possibility. Um, so if we take a closer look at this board here, um, you can see, um, let me flip it over here and we can get a look of how this is constructed. You can see the power input right here is actually just on a flat flex ribbon cable, which also connects to the uh, little proprietary port at the bottom of the machine. Um, you can see over here we have a headphone and microphone input there. And uh, right here we have the slot for the Wi-Fi card. The Wi-Fi card actually just goes right on here and just plugs into this flat flex ribbon. So yeah, it's quite a unique design and this is where uh, the hard drive plugs in. It actually uses a 1.8 inch ZIF IDE hard drive. You can also see the little fan right here. And uh, if we flip the board back over, you can see uh, the CPU heatsink uh, right here. And once again, we can see uh, the little fan. So yeah, that's a good look at the motherboard. Oh, and if you're wondering what this board is, this is actually a Edge or 2G uh, GSM cellular modem, um, which of course really isn't useful these days, but these machines have them, and of course I'm not going to take it out, so it's still there. So with that, let me go ahead and give you an overview of the machine itself. Uh, you can see we've got the little track point there. This is just like a little track point that you would have in the middle of a keyboard on a normal PC. 
Um, we've also got, I believe this is a 4.5 inch uh, resistive touchscreen with a resolution of 1024 by 600. Um, so it's not the best screen, but for a screen uh, this small, 1024 by 600 is actually quite a high resolution. Um, like I said, a resistive screen. It actually does come with a stylus as well, uh, which just kind of sits in the back here. And you can just pull it out. It extends, as you can see right there. And then you just, you know, use it like a normal stylus. So I'll go ahead and set that aside. Over here, we've got the buttons used for the trackpad, or the track point, I should say. Uh, left and right click. Not sure what this button does. This one originally launched a Sony utility. Um, this is the wireless switch, uh, the power hold switch right there. Some zoom buttons I haven't been able to get working. Um, on the back of the machine, we've got the battery, which is just a little tiny uh, three cell battery. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that back in. Um, right here, we've got the cellular antenna, which folds out, which is quite interesting. Um, so that's for the GSM modem. On this side, we've got a USB port, and uh, under this little flap here with the screw in it, uh, there's actually a SIM card slot. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and boot this machine up. Um, now before I do, um, this is actually dual booting between uh, a copy of Windows 7 and a copy of Mac OS X version 10.6.8 Snow Leopard. Um, so that is quite good. Um, if we flip the screen up here, um, we've got a pretty bad keyboard. Uh, but for the form factor of the machine, it actually works pretty well. Um, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do here is just boot it up. And we're going to start by booting into Snow Leopard. So let's go ahead and get this booting here. You can hear it has kind of a cool boot uh, sound there and animation. Um, so we're in the Chameleon bootloader here. So I'll go ahead and boot off the Mac OS volume. Now while this is booting, I should say um, I have actually upgraded this to a 128GB M SATA SSD uh, using an M SATA to ZIF IDE adapter. Um, so of course this is going over an IDE interface still, so you don't get the full uh, speed of the SSD as you can obviously tell. Um, but it is quite a bit faster than the original 4200 RPM 30GB uh, hard disk, um, there's a 1.8 inch hard disk like they use in the uh, iPods in the original MacBook Air. Um, so as you can see, it is booting into OS X here. And uh, once we get in, I'll go ahead and show you uh, around in the system. All right, so now we are in OS X. So uh, let's just go ahead and go to about this Mac. So right there, you can see that this machine has a 1.2 gigahertz well, OS X reports it as unknown, but it is a Core Solo U1400. It also says it has 512 megabytes of DDR2 fully buffered memory, which is not the case, but for some reason OS X detects it as that. And the last thing we're going to go ahead and check here uh, is the internal graphics card. As you can see, this uses the Intel GMA 950 integrated graphics which is of course part of the Intel i945 chipset. And uh, you can see the resolution of the display right there. Now, unfortunately in OS X, uh, the drivers for the internal touchscreen uh, don't exist for OS X. So while it works for the most part, uh, the calibration is a little bit off as you can tell. Um, so I can drag the window around here and if I drag it down to the corner, you can see that the uh, mouse pointer is slightly uh, to the right or to the left of the pin tip there and if I go to the right side of the screen you can see the same is true over here so it is a little bit out of calibration in OS 10 but for the most part it works pretty well um, so now that the system is booted into OS 10 I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you a bit of the accessories and how OS 10 actually worked with them so the first accessory I'm going to show you is right here um, this is actually the Sony Vaio dock uh, that originally came with this machine. Um, so you can see it's got the little proprietary connector here, an indicator for power being connected. It's also got an AV out port right there for composite video. Uh, one USB port there. Firewire 400 right there on the back, the mini version of the port. 
or I-1394, whatever you want to call it. Um, we've also got VGA, two more USB 2.0 ports, an Ethernet port, and the DC power in port. Um, so yeah, the dock is actually pretty cool. I've actually got two of them. Um, I've got one hooked up right here that I'm going to uh, demonstrate. Um, another thing I got with this system is the Sony official uh, little adapter. If you don't have the dock, uh, you can use this to get Ethernet, VGA, and also another AV out port, just like on the dock. Uh, the last accessory I got with this system is the case, uh, which just looks like this. And uh, you can go ahead and take the machine and slide it right in, just like that. And it fits in there nicely. You can go ahead and close it up. And it's a nice little carrying case. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take the system out of the case. And now I'm going to go ahead and set it in the dock that I have already hooked up. Um, I've got it hooked up to this monitor, um, this keyboard, and uh, this mouse right here. So let me just go ahead and put it in and show you that it works. So as you can see here, the uh, machine has detected the monitor and it is now displaying as a secondary display. So I'll go ahead and open up system preferences over here and drag it on over. So yeah, as you can see, uh, it looks quite nice um, and it works very, very well. Um, so now that we have system preferences open here, we can go ahead and open up network. And uh, as you can see, uh, the built-in ethernet on the dock is connected and working. Um, and I've also upgraded the Wi-Fi card uh, from the uh, original Intel Wi-Fi card, which isn't supported under OS X, to a uh, Broadcom BCM4322 card, uh, which works perfectly in both Windows and OS X, of course. Um, so with that, let me go ahead and get out of this. We'll go into the displays preferences here on the smaller screen. And I'm going to go ahead and make the desktop monitor my main display. So I'll go ahead and drag that over. So now as you can see here, it looks basically like we're using a normal desktop. Um, so we'll go ahead and get system preferences over here. You can see system preferences looks completely normal. And uh, yeah, the system is working perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and go to About This Mac again. We can go to Graphics Displays. You can see it detects both monitors perfectly fine in OS X. Um, let's see, what else can we check here? Ethernet. Um, it actually has a Marvel uh, Yukon card, uh, an 88E8036 card. Um, this isn't gigabit, this is 100 megabit Ethernet, but um, for a slow machine like this, it works just fine. So let's go ahead and quit out of that. Um, we can go ahead into displays again and switch back to the small display. So you can see that one is now our main display. Of course, it supports dual displays just like any other machine. And uh, yeah, so with that, let's just go ahead and uh, restart the machine into Windows. And I'll go ahead and show you that a little bit. So as you can see there, I have uh, booted into the Windows volume. So I'll go ahead and let this boot up real quick here. All right, and as you can see, it detected the second display. And uh, Windows is actually mirroring for some reason, so that's interesting. Alright, so now that we're in Windows, uh, we can let it install the drivers real quick for the USB. Alright, there we go. So let's go into control panel here and let's um, change uh, the resolution because it's scaling down from the, uh, the other display here. So now we can go ahead and check out uh, the system information. So 
So right here, you can see that it detects the CPU as a U1400 running at 1.2 gigahertz, as I mentioned. Of course, that is a 32-bit only CPU, so I am running a 32-bit version of Windows 7. Um, and you can see the 512 megs of RAM detected there. So with that, let's go ahead and shut the system down. And we can go ahead and take it out of the dock here. And uh, yeah, so uh, that is the machine. So that has been the overview of this Sony Vaio UX180P uh, Ultra Mobile PC. So hope you enjoyed this video.